New cars, trucks, and SUVs are getting bigger, small vehicles are disappearing, and the reason why is kind of ironic. It's fuel economy, which I know makes no sense. I mean, why would automakers want to get rid of small fuel efficient vehicles and make everything else bigger, making it even harder for them to achieve better fuel economy? The reason is simple. The smaller the vehicle, the tougher it is to hit the corporate average fuel economy targets. Like, it's insanely tough for small vehicles to hit these goals. Take, for example, the Honda Fit. Here's its fuel economy targets. It starts off reasonable, but then quickly climbs to unrealistic levels. For 2026, the Honda Fit would need to be pushing 67 miles per gallon. The Prius, which is the most fuel efficient vehicle in America, caps out at 57 miles per gallon. So basically, it's an impossible task even as a hybrid. So the logical path for Honda was to simply discontinue the Fit for the US market. The only way you're going to be able to achieve these figures is by going fully electric, which is why the Chevy Bolt is one of the smallest cars you can buy today. But it also starts at 26 grand, which is big money for a small car. So basically, if a car is small like the Honda Fit, the Toyota Yaris, or the Nissan Note, get rid of it to avoid paying fines. The alternative is to make a bigger car. And let's take a look at the Honda Civic to see why. As you can see, with each year, the fuel economy target goes up, but then it goes flat. For 2016, Honda introduced a bigger Civic and by increasing its size, it lowered the fuel economy target. And then the same thing happened again in 2022 when the latest and biggest Civic yet hit the market. However, even as a bigger car, the fuel economy for the Civic skyrockets starting next year. And the only way you're going to achieve that is with a hybrid. And what do you know? For next year, we're going to be getting a Civic hybrid. Okay, so one thing I want to mention is that I think these targets are based on the older EPA cycle, which is a lot easier to achieve. So a number that's big like 60 is probably more like 50 with today's cycle. As you can see, CAFE plays a huge role in what vehicles are for sale here in the US. This system applies to all vehicles, which is why they're all getting bigger. It's why the newest HRV is bigger than a CRV from just two generations ago. It's why trucks are massive and why small trucks just don't exist anymore. Just like with small cars, fuel economy standards for trucks can get pretty intense when they get smaller. And this played a big role in why the Ford Maverick is a hybrid. So ironically, the goal of CAFE was to reduce energy consumption by increasing fuel efficiency, but automakers found a loophole by eliminating smaller vehicles and just making their current cars bigger. Maybe the regulators just outsmarted themselves with this crazy formula. I mean, geez, it took me forever to look up all this information and calculate the CAFE targets. These rules actually benefit automakers because larger vehicles tend to be more profitable for them and now they don't have to worry about small vehicles taking away market share. With car prices and interest rates being as high as they've been, I'm pretty sure there's buyers who are missing having those sub $20,000 small cars. While larger cars have grown in popularity, giving manufacturers a reason to make bigger cars, they're more so incentivized to avoid cafe fines. And the simplest way to do that is to eliminate smaller vehicles and make the existing ones bigger. By the way, remember how I talked about the Chevy Bolt being one of the last remaining small vehicles you can buy in America? Well, it's being discontinued and want to take a jab at why? Well, to make a bigger EV.